Okay, here's your icebreaker question uh, for this round. Uh, have you ever campaigned for someone uh, who was running for office? Have you ever campaigned for someone who was running for office? Uh, talk about that with your group. And uh, when you're ready to go into the Bible study, go ahead and press play. I'm uh, <clears throat> cleaning up my office right now. A uh, uh, in the it's in the basement of my my house, and uh, it's pretty pretty small, kind of cramped in here. And I got to get the fan out of here because um, a couple of weeks ago I talked about how I um, had water all over the place. And one of the places that the water went when my pipes were leaking was into the basement and into this office area. So I had a fan in here blow, you know, blowing and drying everything out for me uh, for, the, uh, for the office area. It's all, all dried out now, so I'm ready to get back into the swing of things with, uh, with here. I got a lot of uh, books in here and uh, a lot of work to do still for school. Uh, as well as uh, work for um, for LifeBridge for these videos and, and things like that, uh, preparing lessons and such. I uh, I asked the question about working for um, working for uh, campaign as the icebreaker question because we're at a point in the Book of Acts where Paul is. Uh, now still in custody, and he is um, he's on trial uh, for really, I don't know, a, a riot getting started, and he kind of ends up in custody without doing anything wrong. It's because the Jews don't like him and the fact that he's teaching about Jesus, um, and they think that he's going back, he's turning his back on the faith of uh, Judaism, uh, and so they're trying to, to get him dead. They're trying to, to put him to death, and the Roman government has uh, protected him. They have him in custody, and he's, he's going through various layers now of, of people um, listening to his case in the, in the Roman hierarchy. It started out with the guard and the captain of the guard, then it got sent. Then his case got sent to uh, Felix, who was the governor of the area. Uh, now you're going to see that um, uh, Felix is replaced by Festus, uh, and uh, Festus hears his case. Uh, so this is the governor of the same territory, but now Festus is going to listen to his case, and uh, so he. Um, uh, Actually, he was in jail for uh, over two years because Felix was hoping that, that Paul would, would pay a bribe, and uh, Paul never did. And, uh, and so now it's in Festus' hands. And now there is a, a, the king of the area, so another level up in the hierarchy. The king of the area, King Agrippa, is going to visit the area, and he is going to want to hear Paul's case as well. Um, the, the system back then is, uh, is not that different from our system even here in the United States today. Uh, there is a judicial system, and there you can appeal and go on up to a higher court, all the way up to you know, their equivalent of the United States Supreme Court would be Paul appealing to Caesar, uh, who was the emperor. There was not a separation between the uh, administrative branch and the judicial branch. So the, the, the governor, the kings of the areas, and, and Caesar, who was the emperor, were also the judges who would listen to the cases in the, in the Roman system. So those two concepts that are separated in the United States right now uh, were actually together 
as a single concept back then. Well, Paul is going to uh, find himself uh, pleading his case before Agrippa now. So it's going to go up further in the hierarchy. And it's a, 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 when Agrippa comes in, um, there is just all kinds of pomp and circumstance and just, uh, you know, everything that, that reminds us that Agrippa is important. He is more important than Festus. He is more important than anybody else in the room. And he is the one that you want to plead your case before if you want to be set free. Uh, it is a reminder that, that government uh, administers justice. Uh, and that they are important, and that there are power structures in place that we have to follow. And, uh, and so, uh, as you uh, read these passages, um, take a look at how Paul handles things as he is, uh, as he is, is uh, coming up before uh, Agrippa to share his, his defense. And, um, and I just want you to talk about this with, with your group. Um, have you ever encountered the long arm of the law? Have you ever encountered governments um, in your life with family or friends? Uh, did you maybe have to plead a case or watch a friend pleading a case before a court? Um, and, and how did that feel to go through that? Um, and how did it work out? Uh, did it work out okay for you? Uh, so uh, talk about that with your group after you read these passages, uh, and then you can press play when you're ready to continue. I've, uh, I've run into the long arm of the law uh, more than once in my life. Uh, I actually grew up with a, a dad who was a uh, uh, police officer and then a detective and then a homicide detective. And, um, and so I, I, I knew about the law, I was uh, well aware of the law, and I um, was raised to, uh, to not get in trouble with the law, um, because um, I, uh, cause I had a dad who was, was uh, an, an enforcer of the law. And so that was important in our household that, uh, that I not get in trouble with the law. There were still a couple of times uh, that I, I ended up getting uh, pulled over, for example. Um, one time I got pulled over because, um, because I, had, uh, uh, it, I had been driving and it went into nighttime and I was driving through a town and I didn't realize that I had uh, pulled the switch. It was one of those pull switches for your lights. My running lights came on and not my headlights. And uh, so the police officer got behind me uh, and uh, flashed his lights a couple of times. And I, I didn't respond because uh, a friend of mine and I were driving uh, in kind of a caravan style. I thought it was my friend goofing around behind me. And, uh, and so eventually the blue lights came on and I got pulled over uh, for that one. Uh, there was another time that I, I got pulled over uh, as a teenager, first year driving. And uh, I was in downtown Cincinnati. And I, uh, I was uh, at prom uh, with my date down in downtown Cincinnati. And I didn't have GPS back then and so forth. And I had no way to, I, I knew I had no way out of Cincinnati. I didn't know how to get out. Uh, so I'm trying to find a way and I'm trying to find a way. And finally I'm sitting at a red light, uh, in the right hand lane. And I look up and there it is. There's a sign for interstate, uh, two blocks ahead, uh, so that I can get to an interstate that I, I know it's uh, 70, 75, and I knew how to get home once I got to, to I-75. So uh, I was very excited about that. The light turned green. I went straight ahead to start going, not realizing that I was in a right turn only lane in, in downtown. Uh, and then sure enough, uh, in the lane next to me was a lane that could go straight or turn right. And the car that wanted to, 
that was in the lane next to me wanted to turn right, uh, and that car happened to be a police car. So uh, the police car tried to turn right. I went straight ahead, and uh, the next thing you know, blue lights are, are coming on, and I get pulled over. Uh, neither of those were fun. And I, I'll tell you that uh, um, in both instances, it worked out okay. Uh, I didn't get thrown in jail. I didn't have to go up before a judge. Uh, I treated the, the officer with, with great respect. I had kind of a respect fear thing going on, especially with my dad being a police officer. And uh, at that point, he was a homicide detective. And, and uh, I didn't tell him you know, that I, that my father was a, a police officer or anything like that. I just treated them well. I treated them, uh, with respect. I answered their questions. Uh, they told me to get out of the car in both cases. I got out of the car. I hadn't been drinking. Um, and, uh, in both instances, they understood what the scenario was and, and why my lights weren't on or why I went straight. Uh, I was apologizing profusely and uh, in, in both cases, um, they, uh, they let me go with a warning. And uh, so uh, that was especially good on prom night so that I could get my date home and so forth. Uh, anyway, when, uh, when, when Paul is, uh, is in prison, uh, he didn't get off with a warning. He ends up in, in jail, but he really didn't do anything wrong. Uh, and, and he's had uh, a Roman soldiers hear his, his case, and now two governors and a king hear his case. Uh, and and they're, they're, every step of the way, Paul is treating them with respect. Every step of the way, he's, he's not getting angry at them. He's not tearing them down. He is communicating with them as though they are important and they have the right to administer justice. Uh, and because of that, he's glad that he has the chance to uh, share uh, his perspective, to share his, his story with them. And so he does. And, um, and, and, and I, I'm going to be covering the, the letter that Paul writes to the, to the church in Rome sometime next year. Lord be willing, we'll, we'll get through all of the letters. But I really wanted to bring in this passage this this round, because when Paul wrote to the church in Rome, it was actually uh, most probably prior to all of this stuff where he is in custody and finally ends up um, appealing to Caesar and going to Rome. Uh, this letter was already written when he when he went through all of that. And uh, uh, when you read the passage, especially the passage to, to the Romans here, what you're going to see is Paul's perspective on government uh, and governing authorities and how we should act toward them and why we should act that way. And that is because uh, of the way Paul sees the relationship between government and God. What I'd really like for you to do is to read that passage and think about Paul's situation. I mean, Paul is falsely imprisoned by the very government that he's telling everybody to obey in this passage. How does that affect uh, the way you understand Romans 13, 1 through 5? So read the passage, think about Paul's situation, uh, being imprisoned, uh, and that, that he's been in there now for years, and he hasn't done anything wrong. Um, how does that affect your interpretation? How does that affect your understanding of, of uh, this passage? And, and how does that affect your understanding and your perspective on how we should treat government, uh, regardless of the government and the situation that we are in? So um, read the passages, talk about that at your table, uh, and we will continue when you're ready to press play uh, for the Bible study. When I worked on a political campaign, it was a requirement for high school. And um, 
And, I, and I'm glad that I, I had to do that. I'm glad that I, I fulfilled that requirement. Um, the, uh, I, I had to spend a lot of hours, uh, volunteer hours, working on the campaign, and, uh, and, I, and I did. We ended up um, I, going out and uh, handing out flyers, and uh, you know, basically it was that. It was a lot of handing out flyers and taking them around to, to different homes and uh, doorsteps and so forth. One of the things that really struck me when I was working on that campaign uh, for that school requirement was uh, how small the uh, the campaign headquarters was. It was just a, a little rented office that that they got temporarily to uh, to work out of, and uh, it was great. I mean, it, it was it was fine. It was functional. But there was nothing, you know, big and glorious and grand about it. I mean, if if you go to a government building, they are big, they are grand, they are glorious. They remind us of the fact that government is important and uh, that we we need to uh, uh, respect them, uh, respect government uh, appropriately. But uh, when I was working with the campaign. Uh, you're not in the position of government yet, and so you're working out of this out of this tiny room, and uh, it it reminded me uh, of the fact that um, government is is more than buildings, and it's more than structures and power structures and and rules and laws and so forth. Uh, government is is a, an ideal. It is a set of ideas that are lived out and embodied in people, in real people. Uh, people choose to follow those laws or not follow them. They choose to enact those laws and to enforce those laws or not to enact them or not to enforce them. Uh, government is, is an ideal. Uh, it is a set of ideas that people agree upon and they end up living out. Uh, and when they when they do that, then it starts to look a certain way. Uh, what I'm reminded of uh, as I'm I'm working in my little office here, and there's really not a lot of room here. Okay, uh, but uh, one of the things that that I've been working toward in this office is getting some maps. Uh, this particular map uh, is a a map of of the world. Okay, and uh, and I wanted to have this map in my office to remind me of a different set of ideals, uh, a different set of thought process, and and uh, and the fact that uh, we work for someone who is greater than government. Because when Jesus ascended into heaven, uh, before that he said, "All authority in heaven and on earth." has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Um, government might be big, and it is, and it might have authority, and it does, and it might be important, and it is, but it's not more important than God. And Paul gets that. He understands that. Uh, hopefully I get that as well, and I understand that. You know, as I put up a map of the world, and then I've got another map to work on to, to put up that has the United States uh, of America, these maps are here to remind me that we are supposed to go out to all these places and make disciples of all of these nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus commanded us. And we are reminded that we are not alone, that, that Jesus will be with us always. His Spirit dwells inside of us, even to the end of the age, as we go out to make disciples. This becomes really important in understanding the rest of this passage in, in the book of Acts. You see, um, I give you a little bit here in Acts 26 toward the end, but I, I encourage you to go and pull out your Bible and read all of Acts chapter 26. When you do, you're going to find that Paul is, um, 
is what? Paul is, is giving his defense, but he's not giving his defense as much as it is that he is sharing his story, his conversion experience, and why he believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And more than all of that, you can tell that he is trying to convince Festus, the governor, uh, Agrippa, the king, and all the people who were there in the courtroom that day to accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. See, Paul never loses focus. He recognizes that he works for someone who is greater than government. And because of that, even when he is on trial and talking to people who have the power to release him so that he can be set free in this life and this world, Instead, he chooses to follow the one who is greater than all of that, to listen to his king and his Lord, and to use it as an opportunity to evangelize the Gentiles in the room, Gentiles like Governor Festus, Gentiles like King Agrippa, who have great power and responsibility in the governmental system. Paul keeps his head he keeps cool, and he shares the good news of the gospel even while he is on trial so that everybody in the courtroom will hear and perhaps some of them will accept. Read this passage, and, and like I said, I encourage you to, to open up your Bible and read all of chapter, chapter 26 as you are finishing up uh, here. And then answer this question. How would you do in Paul's situation? Uh, would you have Paul's focus, Paul's faithfulness to sharing the good news of the gospel, even to judges and kings and governors uh, and everybody else, the lawyers who are there hearing your trial? Would God's mission for us be of greater importance to you than anything else that was going on in the room? Uh, pray for one another, that we'll be faithful in sharing uh, God with people, that uh, we will go out and make disciples of all nations, uh, wherever it is that God takes us. Know that I'm praying for you as well, that we are knit together as God's team, and I'm grateful for that. God bless.